everyone, welcome to Fight News Now. My name is John Pollock, and this is where you get informed on everything happening in mixed martial arts. Today on the program, you're going to hear from Mark Munoz, Daniel Cormier, Tito Ortiz, as well as Dwayne Bang Ludwig, plus John Ramdean and Robin Black are going three rounds prior to this weekend's UFC doubleheader, and then Priscilla Carapan will take a look at the EA Sports UFC video game. All of that is coming up, and we start off with this week's newsmakers. It has been seven months since we last saw Mark Munoz absorb a head kick from Lyoto Machida back at Fight Night 30 in Manchester, England. This Saturday, Munoz will be crossing the Atlantic once again as he travels to Berlin, Germany in search of a win as he meets Gegard Mousasi in the main event of the UFC's Fight Night card. You know, his strengths, man, he's, he's an unbelievable striker. Uh, he's, he's got great jiu-jitsu, so I mean, he poses a big problem for a lot of people. Um, at the same time, I feel that um, I feel I have the style to be able to exploit his weaknesses and um, you know I'm going to take the fight you know where, where I feel that he's weak you know and so you know I feel that uh, he's had trouble with some wrestlers. When you're in the UFC every fight is very important but this fight actually bears a lot of weight because the division right now it's, it's all shaken, shooken up. This fight bears a lot of weight so um, with, a, with a great win over, over uh, one of the best fighters in the world I believe. Uh, it's definitely going to put my hat, my name back in the hat. Uh, I feel that there's going to be, uh, there's going to be a finish, you know, second round. Uh, whether it's submission or TKO, I believe that there's going to be a finish. After missing a year of action following a loss to Chris Weidman, Munoz returned last July and dominated Tim Boach before the loss to Lyoto Machida. His adversary on Saturday, Gegard Mousasi, has had his own setbacks due to injury and is also coming off of a loss to Machida after they fought back in February. We now take a closer look at the two middleweights trying to stay in the hunt at 185. For the first time since UFC 122, the promotion heads back to Germany, featuring a main event bout pitting all-American wrestler Mark Munoz against Dutch-Armenian striker Gegard Mousasi. If uh, Mousasi shows up, then he shows up to destroy. If not, Munoz has been both uh, physically and mentally really ready for fights. After a dominant win over Tim Boach at UFC 162. Guys, I really went through a, a, a depression I never thought I would, but... I'm, I'm just living proof what you can do with determination and, and will and desire. The Filipino wrecking machine was forced into a bout with friend and training partner Lyoto Machida, when original opponent Michael Bisping was forced out with an eye injury. Just over three minutes in, the Brazilian would strike. Less than five months later, Musasi would get his chance to slay the dragon at UFC Fight Night 36 in Brazil. Despite forcing the fight into the judges' hands, the former Strike Force champion would come up short on all three judges' scorecards. For Munoz to get back onto the winning track, he'll need to attack with his wrestling to put Musasi on his back and use his devastating ground and pound to secure the victory. I told you I'd play some Donkey Kongas. Musasi, on the other hand, will need to keep his distance from the NCAA Division I wrestling champion and light him up on the feet. Landed a nice combination there, though, did Musasi. However, if Munoz does get the fight to the ground, the dream catcher is more than competent off of his back. He's going to try to sweep to his left side, and he does. So beautifully done there by Gegard Musasi. In a classic battle of striker versus grappler, we'll see who can get back on track and move up the middleweight ranks. The same day as the Germany card, the UFC will also be running the Tough Brazil 3 finale event from Sao Paulo, Brazil. The card has been littered with injuries and fight changes, with the final product being a main event pitting Stipe Miocic against a bulked up light heavyweight in Fabio Maldonado. It's not the main event that will sell the most tickets, but could be high on the entertainment scale. Brazilian fans may not be happy that Vanderlei Silva, Chael Sonnen, as well as Junior Dos Santos have fallen off the card set for Sao Paulo. However, they will get to see one of their countrymen take on a heavily favored American as Fabio Maldonado steps in on short notice to face number seven ranked heavyweight Stipe Miocic. The Golden Gloves champion certainly has the speed and foot movement to match Maldonado on the feet. And a nice knee, foot combo. Way to finish for Miocic. However, the easiest path to success for the natural heavyweight would be to put the Brazilian on his back where he's looked vulnerable in the past. For Maldonado, lasting 25 minutes would probably be a victory on its own. 
and with one of the strongest chins in the business, he certainly has a chance. Oh, and that one opened Maldonado up. To secure the victory, the former pro boxer will likely have to goad Miocic into a brawl and hope that his beard can hold up long enough to land a power shot of his own. Both guys landing. Can Stipe stomp Maldonado and move closer to a title shot? Or will the Brazilian pull off the upset in front of his home crowd? One week ago, many had assumed it would be a routine title defense for Henan Barrow at UFC 173, but here we are with TJ Dillashaw, the new king of the bantamweight division. With the best performance of his career, Dillashaw ended the 33-fight unbeaten streak of Barrow and finally brought UFC gold to Team Alpha Male, and we now hear from the new champion. I'm going to continue to train with Team Alpha Male, um, but I'm going to cross-train with Dwayne. You know, I'll go out and train with him on my, my, uh, when I don't have a camp, and I'll fly him out when I'm in camp. I'm going to continue to work with Dwayne. He'll be in my corner. Uh, I plan on getting my black belt under the guy. I mean, he's a genius. Um, but I think he's going to get the best of both worlds. We're going to have a new coach come in and be able to watch me there, and then I'll be able to get training from Dwayne. So I'm going to have multiple eyes on me, and i got to stay with Team Alpha Male. I mean, they've got me where I'm at, and they're the best sparring partners you can get for my weight class. It was the highest of highs for Team Alpha Male this past Saturday, but also noteworthy is what Dillashaw mentioned, that this was striking coach Dwayne Bang Ludwig's final night with the team as he moves back to Colorado to open his own gym, with Dillashaw and Ludwig having a very strong relationship at the gym and does create a very unique dynamic for the new champion, and Ludwig spoke about their partnership and how it's going to continue. That was my goal, is to get those guys a belt. Now, this is somewhat of a lesson for setting goals and accomplishing them. I think I set my, my sights too low. I, maybe I should have set my sights on helping them retain their belt, you know? So I want to make sure that, you know, what we have to, now we have to step up our game even more. So it, it's, a, it's an interesting scenario for sure. Make sure that I just have to reset my goals. So I'm not leaving, I'm just going to open up my own business. You know, it's not like I'm leaving, even all the headlines say that, you know, I love my guys, you know, and, you know, they, they know I'm generally there for them. And, uh, and again, you know, it's a business, but it's not really a business for me. Again, it's my passion. I love these guys. I love I mean, I love martial arts, I'm a martial artist. It's, it, martial arts is who I am, it's what I am. Daniel Cormier put in an incredible performance at UFC 173, dismantling Dan Henderson and choking him out cold in the third round. Cormier now believes he is due a light heavyweight title shot and spoke at the post-fight press conference regarding his options of sitting and waiting or opting to stay busy until the champion is ready to fight Cormier. John Jones is a, is a great champion. He's defended that title more than anybody ever has. And if he lost, you know, he deserves a rematch, just like Anderson Silva did. Those guys have, have earned the right to fight for the title as many times as they want, you know. So, yeah, I would definitely fight again. I'm not saying I'm opposed to just fighting. I'm just saying that I think after four years, four and a half years of the sport, what I've accomplished, you know, that I think I deserve a title shot. But as Dana said, you know, we're going to talk. And, and if they come up with something good, I'll, I'll fight. I mean, I'm not, I'm not afraid of anybody. I mean, I can beat every one of these guys, so I'm, I'll fight them all. This month may in fact be the month of the upset with TJ Dillashaw, Will Brooks, and this man, Tito Ortiz, whose win over Alexander Shlomenko at Bellator 120 has rejuvenated the former light heavyweight champion's career and once again opened up discussions towards the elusive Tito ortiz Quinton rampage jackson fight, and we hear from Ortiz regarding that possibility. Rampage didn't want to fight Emmanuel Newton. I'll fight Emmanuel Newton. I want to be the world champ. I can beat him. I'll beat him. I guarantee I'll beat him. Then me and Rampage fight for the title, then Rampage doesn't have to fight uh, his best friend for the title. The storyline will be perfect when it is done and we do fight each other, because we are going to fight each other for sure. Me and Rampage will we'll lock horns, you know, it's just a uh, timing for everything, the build up for it, to be a big pay per view. And we heard from Tito Ortiz there, Mr. Ramdeen, and you know it was a feel good moment him submitting Alexander Shlomenko, but it's part of my brain that just says this man's career, it's, it's going to end violently. Well, who knows? I mean, Tito Ortiz, uh, obviously the Bellator organization, they're behind him. 65,000 pay-per-view buys. So maybe he still has a future. Well, coming up on three rounds, we're going to be looking at not one UFC card, two UFC cards on Saturday. Get ready for the era of the doubleheader because we're going to get a few of them in 2014. Yeah, I am uh, very excited, but it's going to be exhausting. However, there is going to be an outstanding fight and it features two guys that have back-to-back -back losses and their backs are kind of against the wall and it's going to be an outstanding fight. Usually you can do reasonable deduction here, but with this tough Brazil three finale card, a lot of guys with some <laughs> losses coming into this card. Coming up, three rounds on Fight News Now.
Welcome back to Fight News Now. I'm John Pollock, and it's time to welcome in John Ramdeen and Robin Black as we send it over for three rounds. And guys, we have three rounds times many, 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 many fights this coming Saturday. Oh my God, May 31st, not one, but two UFCs. And at night, we're at the Canadian Black Belt Hall of Fame, so it is going to be a very loaded weekend. We gotta start uh, with all the action that's going down in Germany. The main event, a very good one. Gegard Mousasi, uh, the hardcore fans know who this guy is. Very skilled in the stand-up department, as well as the submission game. Constantly working on his wrestling abilities, and he needs it. He's, he's taking on Mark Munoz, known for his wrestling skills. Uh, we, we talked about that fight, the yeah. main event yeah. uh, at Nauseam. Yeah, it is a good one. But we got to talk about some of the other fights to get people excited, to get them interested. And uh, I was going to talk about this middleweight matchup uh, between Francis Carmont and CB Dalloway, and we're going to get to that fight. We got to talk about the 135 pound division, considering TJ Dillashaw became the new bantamweight champion of the world. And who are some of the challengers? Maybe the winner of the 135 pound tilt between Yuri Alcantara and Von Lee. And you had a chance to, uh, when Von Lee was making his way to the Ultimate Fighting Championship, you had some experience in uh, helping somebody get ready for Von Lee. Yeah, Kid Yamamoto, the oh, great, legendary Kid Yamamoto, a cool dude, man. He came over to Toronto to train for Von Lee for a fight in Japan. And Yamamoto was preparing for him. Sergio Kuna was the head coach. And I was there as a body in the training room and as part of the team. So I watched Sergio Kuna, who's a brilliant coach, prepare Kid for Von Lee. And he really prepared him well. But we really underestimated how good Von Lee was. Not only did he hand Yamamoto his first submission loss ever in his career, but he just looked really good. He moved well. His wrestling was better than you expected for a British guy. And this guy's only couple of losses, a Sun Sao, who's arguably the number one or two contender, Dillashaw, who's the champ, and Wilson Hayes, who's the killer. So this guy is one of these bubbling under the level guys that you really got to see in Alcantara, man. This guy's great. Uh, you talk about Von Lee. Uh, he got that victory over Kid Yamamoto and then lost to TJ Dillashaw. And we know how legit TJ Dillashaw is now uh, taking on uh, Yuri Alcantara. Alcantara seems to be the, the man. Obviously, there's ways to figure this guy out, but I think you'd step back and you look at his performance against Uriah Faber, and I don't think anybody will argue that Uriah Faber is the number two or number yeah. three 135-pound fighter on the planet. And Alcantara looked very, very good. This guy is a finisher. Of his 29 victories, 24 have come by finish. 12, I think, by knockout. 12 by submission. So he can get it done anywhere. And I think if he can impress in this uh, performance against uh, Von Lee, who knows? He could be uh, fighting for the title in his next one or two fights. For sure. And if Von Lee steps out and says, I'm beating top five guys yeah. and my only loss is to the champ and guys at the very top, he can make that statement too. That's the exciting thing about when a guy steps into a division and claims it as his own. Suddenly, everybody thinks that they've got an opportunity. You know, you had a champ in Hannon Barrow who was unbeatable. Yeah. Suddenly, he's beaten. If he doesn't get the shot next, do you think maybe you got a chance against Dillashaw? So, very exciting time for that. we got to get to this 185 yeah. pound matchup. Uh, George St. Pierre's guy, Francis Carmont, taking on CB Dalloway. And I'll be the first one to say, I was not a believer in CB Dalloway. You know, coming off the Ultimate Fighter, yes, he has wrestling abilities and this and that, comes from a good team, but how will he fare against the upper echelon of the fighters, of the guys at 185 pounds? What I will tell you, he has impressed me over his last couple of performances. He has that loss against Tim Boach. Many people believe that he deserved the victory yeah. in that fight. Got that knockout uh, victory in his last fight over Cesar Ferreira. Looking good yeah. right now. Will he be able to uh, use the strategy of wrestling and either put uh, Francis Carmont up against the cage, which we've seen him do in the past to fighters, or will he be able to get this fight down to the ground and make it grindy and wear this guy out? Yeah, this is a really great fight. And if you don't like Francis Carmont's style, which a lot you, of people don't, a lot of people don't, and you don't like CB Dalloway's Dalloway ness, Clarence Byron Dalloway, I love this guy. Big, big fan. <laughs> a lot of guys in the office are starting to really get behind this guy. Not only, you know, the one loss in his recent fights, which 
wasn't a loss. And then uh, in his last fight, he was getting lit up and he's playing this shoulder yeah. roll game. Ill-advised game to play against the cage. But he's a dangerous, exciting, risk-taking guy against a, a risk-averse guy. So you kind of cheer for, for C.B. Dalloway if yeah. you're a fan of that style. But you kind of cheer against him if you just don't like his personality. But you got to get behind this guy. This is a really good fight. It's a lot of fun. Real contrast of styles. Two guys near the top. One of them will make a big statement. Uh, you're talking about two guys near the top of the 185-pound division. You have to imagine uh, if either one of these guys gets an impressive victory, they're kind of a yeah. part of that title conversation. Again, it's probably one or two victories, impressive victories away from getting a shot at the title. But now with Anderson Silva sitting on the yeah. sidelines, that 185-pound class kind of wide open. Carmont needs a big, exciting one. He needs the new Carmont. He needs to come out and say, you know all those fights you didn't enjoy my thing, and then I lost to a, to a Jacques Array. You know, and now I got to be exciting. He needs to do that. Dalloway's a guy who may give him that chance. And if he does, you might see a firefight. Carmont's super genetically superior to most human beings on Earth. He's really talented. But uh, I think CB Dalloway has a lot of advantages, too. One of my picks for fight of the night uh, comes between Andy Ogle and Maximo Blanco. Uh, both men have one victory in their past four fights, so they kind of have their backs up against the wall. But we've seen their style. It lends for entertainment. We also got to talk about quickly, we got to talk about Brazil. Uh, Damian Mayan taking on the Russian, uh, Alexander Yakovlev. Uh, is this too soon for Yakovlev, the Russian? I know the Russians are like, no, we'll take on whoever we need to take on. Hey, Yakovlev is great at sambo, great at wrestling. He's a handy hand combat guy, and he's not a bad rapper either. Check that out on YouTube. But yeah, it's pretty soon. But you know this guy's in there, and, and to him, jujitsu is life, sambo is death. The main event, uh, Maldonado versus Stipe Miocic. Are we getting a, a knockout of the night? Uh, no, I don't. I feel Stipe is going to absolutely punish this man, but not finish him. We will see. Fabio Maldonado, <laughs> I watch that guy, and I just I don't understand it. Very, thank you very much, guys. If you want to get more of their analysis coming off of both UFC cards this weekend, be sure to catch them with five rounds Monday night at 7 Eastern here on Fight Network. We're going to tag out, but we're coming back with the shift. And if you thought we didn't find a viral video this week, you're wrong. We are back on the show, and as we've been chatting, the UFC will be running two cards on Saturday, so what better way to get yourself prepared than by watching more MMA, and we've got 1FC 16 airing this Friday morning at 7 a.m. Eastern, featuring the promotional debut of Ben Askren as he meets Bakhtiar Abasov. Now we welcome in Priscilla Carapan for The Shift, alerting gamers everywhere of what the UFC has planned for you. EA Sports UFC gives you the chance to be the champ in your very own home. Robin Black gives you an exclusive look into the game and the lowdown from EA Creative Director Brian Hayes on the Next Generation Technology. Hey guys, Robin Black here for The Shift and we are at UFC Canada headquarters. I'm going to take you guys on a sneak peek of EA Sports UFC and I think I'm going to get to play it. As part of the career mode experience in the EA Sports UFC, for the first time, the Ultimate Fighter is a part of, of the fighter's journey. So when you uh, start a career mode, we send you in a create a fighter interface so you can create a fighter that looks like whoever you want. You can also use uh, EA Sports Game Face technology to upload photos. Um, you go right into having an audition slash tryout to get on the Ultimate Fighter. You make it on the show, win the show. Winning the Ultimate Fighter is your path to entering the UFC. All right, can we play the game? You, we certainly can. That's why we're here today. Uh. Now, I'm Uriah Faber, who should definitely be able to beat Dominic Cruz. However, you actually made this video game, so I suspect I might lose for my boy uh, yeah. Uriah. Here. While you have the physical abilities right now of Uriah Faber, I have the tactical know-how of virtually every fighter in the game. I'm like a super brain. I've been working on this game for 22 months. Um, there's very few people that know more about how to play than I do, so. So, I literally have no chance here. So why don't I just... You have a puncher's chance. There's always a puncher's <laughs> yeah. chance. Yeah, actually, if there's always a puncher's chance, then it's actually exactly like fighting. Pretty like, much. If we were to put you or our uh, cameraman Way here in with BJ Penn, you have got, well, no. No, I don't really have no, a puncher's chance. So you've got a single, a double, do you have a high crotch? Uh, there's basically, right now we yeah. have a, a single, a double, and then uh, for a single and a double, you can also uh, sort of amplify them by holding them on the left bumper, and you get a big slam. 
Oh, beautiful. Wow. That's gonna hurt a little bit. Even though that hurt me quite a lot, it was still cool to see. Oh, end of the round. Oh, nice. Well, I survived one. I mean, it's not like you let me or anything. No, that was no. I was trying my yeah. very hardest. Yeah. What about cage work? So we clinch up against the cage. Say that we want to, let's not beat each other up for a second. Say I want to go and engage you in a clinch on the cage. Oh, cool. So, you know, in the tie clinch, I can muscle you around. Amazing. Um, yeah. Wherever I want, but throw really the big thing yeah. that I want to do is, you yeah. know, I want to throw big yeah. knees to your face or to your yeah. body. I haven't told you how to block yet, so yeah, obviously Yeah, right, that's uh, a good strategy for not... It's very effective yeah. for, for, for winning fights. Yeah. yeah. Uriah Faber's going to be so mad at you if he sees this. Yeah, I know he will too. Downstairs, oh, oh, upstairs. No. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Yeah. Sorry, Uriah, I didn't... This guy made the game, you know? <laughs> So here I throw on a submission. The submission game HUD comes up. You'll see what happens. You start pushing that right stick up, down, and left to right. You'll see that that white line starts from the outside. If you get a white line all the way to the outside, that means you're going to escape the submission. And the crazy thing is, this simulates shrimping in my hips. Yeah, we take the submission through stages. Awesome. Um, so you're fighting to get it deeper and deeper. Can I get Darces and... Yep, and there's 29 and... different submissions in the game. Wow, cool, man. You know, we wanted to make sure that it looked authentic. Uh, Chrome Gracie came up to the studio and, and looked at every single submission we have in the game and all the stages they go through and how the fighters um, move their hips and that kind of stuff. We basically got a, you know, a, a check mark um, on most of the boxes, if not all of the boxes. So we feel pretty solid about the way the technique is represented in the game. And then the other good part is that it's relatively easy to pick up and play. I think I can figure out how to make this work. Hopefully, I mean, there would certainly be a great outcome is if people that have more experience, you know, in fighting and a greater understanding of fighting, they might actually be able to pick up the controls a little bit quicker. Badass, thanks man. Hey, you're welcome. That's it for the shift this week. Back over to you, John. Thanks as always, Priscilla. And this is the portion of the show where we thank you, the viewer at home, with a little item we refer to as the weekly viral video, a never-ending gift from all of us to you. Well, that brings this show to a close. I want to thank Daniel Cormier, Tito Ortiz, Mark Munoz, and Dwayne Bang Ludwig for stopping by. This Thursday on the MMA Report, I'll be chatting with UFC welterweight Tyron Woodley on FightNetwork.com as well as on iTunes. For John Ramdean, and Robin Black, Priscilla Carapan, and the Fight Network crew, my name is John Pollock, and enjoy all of the UFC events coming up this weekend. Working with John Jones is so confusing. Who is he? I've got full heel. No, but I want to be a good guy. You can't be. You're cocky and arrogant. But I'm humble and nice to everyone. I poker. <laughs>